Hey, it's Amy, and in today's video, I'm going to revisit a favorite design, the feathered paisley flower, or feathered flowers, it's often called. I've done this before, but it was with a ruler foot on my machine, and it was a little hard to see. So, let's get to quilting. Okay, so in revisiting this feathered flower. First, a note about the machine and the foot. I'm using a Janome 15,000. It has an automatic presser foot lift that I could raise and lower with a button. It also sets the height of my free motion foot. It does not hop. This is the QO foot on it. And the QO foot would come with a machine that has the ability to use this foot. And I get a lot of questions about, can I use that foot on my machine? Well, if your machine came with it, yes. So I've made a nice little paisley. Let's go ahead and trim those threads out of the way. And then we start with our feathers. So you can make these fat and short. You can make them long and skinny. You can make them very curvy, whatever floats your boat. You don't have to be quite as uh, perfect to make these little petals out of your feather plume as you would if you were doing an actual feather, a quilted feather. And then once you've done that, there's two options. You can bounce around, just giving the petals a little echo. And I like this because it helps me end kind of over here, where I can then put in another paisley. And you can put as many rounds on your paisley as you want. Sometimes I'll use three to four, and I can vary that depending on what direction I wanna travel in. So I'm gonna put this first plume very curvy over here so I can fill in this space. I am making no effort to backtrack between the plumes. You can if you want. This just makes it a lot faster, fills in the space easier, and you don't have to be as careful or concerned with it. Now, I'm over here on this second one, and maybe I don't want to echo back around because then I'll be butting up right up against that first paisley. So I may decide to skip it on this one. And I would say if you want to do one, skip one, you want to be kind of consistent with that. But I can just come on out of here. If I want to, I can echo part of it. Just one little paisley or one little plume. And then I can put in my paisley. Make sure that you are not whipping your hands in the curves, that can really help give you eyelashes on the back where the bobbin thread is pulling that top thread to the back. And it's usually really about a yank on the thread followed by a release that gives you those eyelashes. You want to watch your spacing when you get into something like here. You're kind of in a corner. Work yourself out of that little dead end. Backtracking on this pedal here. And you just continue on. And you can go right to left, left to right. It doesn't matter. If you count your repeats, it can help you figure out if you're going to end up to the left or to the right, which can really help you move around your project, your quilt. Does not have to be perfect, but you want a little bit of consistency. So this one here is going to be my last one. 
for my actual feathers. But then I'm going to throw in a little tiny one like this. And I'm doing it in the opposite direction and that just fills in that awkward hole. And again with the paisley. So a word about the plumes for our feathered flower is that they're really kind of like curved teardrops. They don't complete the teardrop shape at that point. But that's the shape you're going for. So for this one, I think I will go ahead and do that echo. Since I did it for the first one, let's not leave it out of all of them. I just use my foot to kind of help me space those a little bit. And now I'm back right over here, ready to go again. And if I wanted to, I could then, let's go ahead and do that. I can echo from here. And move around. And that allows me to get to this area over here, just different ways of moving around your quilt. how you do the feathered flower. I'm sure there are plenty of variations on this that you can do. It's a really versatile design, big, small, in rows across your quilt, like an edge to edge design or working out from the center. And I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.